Bree's gonna learn how to ride the scooter. Let's do this, Bree. Let's do this. Okay. I what pull do you think? it back? Yeah. You ready to do this? Just this one side? Yep. <laughs> Just uh, kind of gradually. Okay. And don't get freaked out when it starts going forward. Okay. When you feel comfortable, put your feet up. Okay. Okay. Boy. Okay, that's a start. Ah, uh, the Bahamas. One of my new favorite places in the entire world. We had a chance to go to Exuma and we had a chance to check out some of the beaches. I know there are so many beaches on Exuma that are top rated, best beaches in the world. We had a chance to explore three of them and we did it by scooter, which we'd never done before. So that was an experience in itself. But here are three beaches on Exuma that we thought were amazing. If the other beaches are anything like it, whew, can't even explain how beautiful it is. I would really like to do a part two on this video to hit some of those other beaches that I know are world-class that I don't want to miss. So look for part two. If I ever do get a part two, it'll be up above. So go ahead and click that link if it's up there. Anyway, here's the video. I hope you like it. If you do, please subscribe. Thanks. So today, Bree and I are in Zuma, Bahamas. We're trying to find some of the best beaches the island has to offer. And from what I hear, it's not short on really good beaches. So we decided the best way to do that would be on a scooter. So we rented a scooter. We're having fun with the scooter. <laughs> Join us today as we go along Exuma looking for the best beaches around. Welcome to Coco Plum Beach. So when you think about the Bahamas and beautiful beaches, this is it. This is what you think of. This is amazing. This is Coco Plum Beach. We're in Exuma. It was a little bit further away from where we're staying. It's kind of at the northern end of the island. But boy, it's, it's worth the drive. But when you think of the Bahamas and paradise, this is it, man. This is it. The sand is white sand. It's so fine. It's so soft. It's not hot, there's no rocks, the water is perfectly clear. When you look out there, it's just all these different colors of blues and whites and turquoise and blue sky and the white clouds. It's paradise. The water is perfect. This might be one of the most picture-perfect beaches I've ever been to. That's Bree out there. She's usually kind of a non-fan of cold water and she has jumped right in before I've even got in. So that's telling you kind of the water temperature. We'll use Brienne, we'll use a, the Briameter for how cold water is. And right now the Briameter says the water's perfect. Here's an example of how fine the sand is. It's perfect, dog. Bree's already in, so I know I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna enjoy this water. And yeah, this water's temperature is so perfect. I've been to quite a few beaches and I, I love this beach. As you can see, it's fairly secluded right now. There's nobody else here except for us. About 10.30 in the morning on a Saturday. We're the only ones here. There's a building that's like a thousand meters. I know that's how you measure visibility. It's like a thousand meters easily. You can see as far as you can see above water about. I haven't done a lot of research on the cost of beaches. I don't know if they're all free or if they're some private ones or I don't know. The Bahamas and Exuma. But uh, this one's free. If you're looking for the wave pool type experience, it's not really happening here. I don't know if it's for today or if it's always this calm. But if you're looking for just a chill, relax, perfect water, no undertow, no current, stuff like that. This is your beach. This is one of the most chill beaches I've ever been to. Go to Coco Plum Beach.
Seriously. We're out quite a ways and it's still just up to my waist walking. So if you have small children, young children, or short people like me, this is a pretty good beach for that where you don't have to worry a whole lot about getting dragged underwater or big drop offs. I'm still walking out here. Brian and I are still walking out here to see how far we can go while we're walking. There's even an island out there that we kind of want to go see right out there. So if we can keep walking to it, we might check it out. So far it's been the same level, just waist level this whole way. I forgot sunscreen. But I talked to her to let me go just a little bit further. Says it's farther than I think, and she's probably right. She's usually right. But I think I'm getting closer, folks. I think we're about to see some, probably some sort of history being made. First person to cross the Cocoa Plum Beach Channel by walking it to the probably probably undiscovered island. This probably isn't on any maps or anything. Probably the first person. So we're gonna call this Bria Dice. That way you can tell her I named it after her. When I complaining about being sunburnt, she tells me you should have wore sunscreen. If you believe, you will achieve. Coming up on the island, we're almost there. Hang with me, we're almost there. Tell you what, if you come to Exuma, Cocoa Plum Beach, and you make your way out to Bria Dice, go to the Facebook page, leave me a picture on that, and a way to get, get it to you, and I will send you an official Wandering Firefighter sticker for your efforts and to commemorate this wonderful achievement of making it to Bria Dice. Because folks, ta-da! Bria Dice is upon us. So the bottom line for Cocoa Plum Beach, one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever been to. It's calm, it's chill, it's fairly isolated. Definitely up there is one of my favorites. I say that about every beach I, I go to, I think, but I mean it this time. This is one of my favorites. This is great. You can walk on this beach for a long ways all by yourself, undisturbed. Thing to note, at least in the part of the beach that we were at, there's not really any amenities here. There's a little uh, cabana. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of like bathrooms or anything like that. There's a nice lady here with a table set up with some uh, stuff and she also sells water. So that's, that's about as close as you get to an amenity. But that's also part of the charm. It's pretty nice here. Okay, I think we are at the point now where we're going to a beach with some turtles. It's known to have sea turtles all over it. If you look for the beach access sign, the driftwood condos, and then I think we go down this path because the sign says beach access with an arrow. We'll see what it is. Here's the path. So far so good. It looks pretty beautiful again. Oh, and there's a little lizard friend. This might be the beach access we were looking for. Welcome to Hooper's Bay Beach. The Hooper's Bay is yet another beautiful beach here. Beautiful water, beautiful sand. It's just gorgeous. We're not sure where the turtles are yet. So we're gonna head down to where those people are to see if there's turtles down there. The breometer says that the water is just fine. We're pretty hot. We've been riding on that scooter and it gets pretty warm. But uh, here's the view from Hooper's Bay Beach. Hooper's Bay is sort of like by some rental condos. So I think some of the sporting equipment's for the condos. And I don't know if these are resorts or houses or what, but there's a lot of different stairs accesses down to this beach. But the road access that we took, I don't know. We just parked our scooter on the side of the road. I hope it's still there when we get done. Let's enter the water at Hooper's Bay. Oh, this is perfect. And I think one of the appeals of this beach is that it's closer to Georgetown. It's closer to kind of where a lot of the the main amenities and the main uh, resort areas are. So this is a pretty easy beach to get to. Cocoa Plum was beautiful and we felt a little more 
isolated, but it took a while to get there. It was probably about a 45 minute drive from Georgetown area. So that's the downside for that, but it's also one of the cool sites too. Bree says this one gets her vote over Cocoa Plum, mainly because there's not a lot of seagrass here. Just all perfect white fine sand and it's deeper. So this is uh, Bree's favorite so far. This is so beautiful, you guys. Such a beautiful place. Can't get over it. So we went over and asked these kind people, I think from the UK, asked them where they saw the turtles. They instructed us to head over to that dock way over there. Evidently there's some seagrass and the turtles feed on the seagrass. We're gonna head over there. I'll let you know if we find some turtles. Well, between walking to Briodice and walking to the turtles, getting my steps in today. Here's our friends from the tour. They hollered at us. So, so cool. On our trek down to the turtles, we ran into our friends from a tour we took yesterday. If you want to check out that tour, I'll have a link above. We went and swam with pigs. We saw fed iguanas, stuff like that. But we met some wonderful people that we're going to keep in touch from here on out. So if you guys are watching this, thank you for the drink. Thank you for the conversation. And uh, I'm glad we met you. So we came down to this dock. We were told that there's turtles feeding on seagrass out there. Let's go on out. Okay, they were right. Here's some turtles. So this guy just swam right over to Bree. Just wanted to come say hi. Oh, look at him. <laughs> Definitely worth the walk. These turtles just hang out here. They just swam right up the breeze. I think they probably thought she had some food with her. Oh, it's because they love her. They just love her. She just radiates turtle magnetism. Like April O'Neil from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So if you take the beach access path that we took at Hooper's Bay Beach, and you hang a right, you walk down to the first dock there, and that's where you find these turtles. That just skyrocketed the enjoyment of this beach. They're so friendly, they're so cute, they come right up to you, there's so many of them. It, it's so neat. This just uh, kind of leapfrogged cocoa plum, mainly because of the turtles. I love them. A piece of advice from a rookie at this beach, bring snorkel stuff, or at least goggles, so you could put your face underwater, and look at them. Kind of missing out on that. I cannot describe how cool this is. I could stay here forever. I could literally stay in this water with these turtles forever. They're so cool. So as Amaya would say, 10 star recommend. This beach has been a 10 star recommend, hands down. It's a beautiful beach, the water's great, the sand is great, and the turtles are so cool. They're so friendly, and, I, and I'm really sad leaving. So this has really shot up there as one of my favorite all-time beaches. So come check out Hooper's Bay Beach. You're gonna love it, I promise. Hopefully our scooter's up there, yes. I see the hog. The hog is waiting up there for us to mount it and hit the road to the next stop. This is just a giant white sand beach. Beautiful turquoise blue water. It's kind of the same theme as all the other beaches. Absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna use the word pristine. The sand is just perfect. Okay, 
The Briometer, how you like it? Briometer says perfect. Let's do this then. She thinks it's perfect. It's gonna be perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, she's never wrong. This is perfect. This is the perfect temperature for an ocean with the sun out. It's not cold, it's not warm. Perfect. I'm intrigued by this little cove over here between the cliffs. So we're gonna go check that out. All right, we're gonna go around this cliff. We're gonna see what's over there in the little cove. Well, I'll be, that looks like paradise. So another little hidden treasure at Jolly Hall Beach. I like this area. This is where I would spend most of my time at this beach. It's a little more secluded, it has the palm trees, has some landscaping, beautiful. Again, you can't beat it. This uh, little cove here upped Jolly Hall in my eyes. So I'm gonna go with my rankings. The beach with the turtles, probably number one. This is probably number two now because of this cove. And Cocoa Plum's probably number three, just because it was farther away. Those are my top three right now. So I admit, every place I travel, I say that I love something about it, that I would love to, to spend more time there, that there's something about the place that just draws me to it. And I've loved them, but I'm not gonna lie, I am in love with Exuma. Everything about this place has been magical. It's pretty pricey. That's probably the, the biggest drawback is it's pricey here. But these beaches, I love the ocean so much. And these beaches are amazing, so pristine. They're so soft on your feet. I love the other beaches like uh, Santorini, with the rugged cliffs and the caves and stuff like that. But I am in love with these beaches. I do know that there are tons of other beaches on this island. So many other beaches and they're all probably super beautiful. So that's gonna give me a chance to come back and do part two. Cause I don't feel like this list is complete yet. I think there's so much going on like in Little Exuma, uh, stuff like that. Just didn't have enough time this time. So be looking for part two to this beach uh, collection. Hi buddy. Hi buddy. Hi. Oh, you're a good boy or girl. I don't know, are you a boy or a girl? You're friendly though, aren't you? There you have it, three world-class, top-notch beaches or any place in the world, any place I've ever been, located on Exuma in the Bahamas. The water was unreal, the sand was unreal, the wildlife was unreal. Paradise. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you did. Uh, watch my other Bahamas videos if you plan on visiting the Bahamas or you've been there before and you want to see the similarities. Or subscribe and see other adventures from around the world. We'd love to have you aboard. Thanks for watching. And remember, die with memories, not dreams.